Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. June, a young boy who lives in an orphanage, is shown to the audience in the opening scene. He arrived here after his parents were killed in a car accident some time ago. June finds solace in his love of drawing because he sees it as a way to deal with stress and bring joy into his life in addition to his artistic talent. June has impressive fighting skills as well. He gives us a brief demonstration by defeating a student in the ninth grade. It becomes clear that his father passed on this quality to him, who competed at the national level of Taekwondo. Dioker Ji-Yu, a National Intelligence Service chief agent, pays a nighttime visit to the orphanage. Dioker Ji-Yu is aware of Jun's fighting prowess and aims to train and recruit him as an undercover agent. He encourages Jun to strive for greatness and contribute to the nation, following in his father's footsteps. From there on out, Jun sets out on his preparation, continuously forming into a considerable contender and procuring the lofty title of a tip-top professional killer. Jun is still dedicated to his love of drawing despite everything. He always is. New sketches, even when on dangerous missions, Jun is given the task of apprehending Simon, a fugitive who is the younger brother of a notorious criminal named Jason. Jun easily captures Simon alive. One day, Jun is given the task of apprehending Simon. The National Intelligence Service, also known as the NIS, also learns during the subsequent questioning that Jason has just taken a ship from Busan. Chio, a talented new member of the NIS, arrives a moment later to receive instruction on criminal interrogation methods. However, Simon dies from the agonizing torture before they can investigate further. Chili's training after this was subpar. Jun is given a terrible order to get rid of Jason as soon as possible without delay. Jun gets ready and gets on a helicopter headed for Jason's ship. He bravely jumps from the helicopter when he reaches the designated area, but he fails to deploy his parachute, resulting in a dangerous fall into the sea. Jun is believed to have passed away as a result of this incident, prompting his team to gather to pay her respects. However, it turns out that their assumption about Jun's existence is incorrect in honor of him. Jun appears to have staged his own death in an unexpected turn of events in order to forego his position as an undercover agent and pursue a career as an artist. The story then quick advances by 15 years, where Jun has turned into an internet tune craftsman. To Jun, was it really worth it? Mina, a hardworking woman, is the woman he is currently married to. Guy Yong, their nine-year-old daughter, is also their child. It appears that they are contentedly living their lives. But on the inside, things are very different. Junior is having a hard time at work. Additionally, he is constantly under pressure to meet the deadlines set by his editor. Negative remarks that undermine his confidence are also made to him. Despite his flaws, this has resulted in a significant financial shortfall at home. His significant other remaining parts dedicated to him and supports him inside and out. June takes care of all the housework, including cleaning, while she works double shifts making meals and getting their daughter ready for school. Additionally, he secretly supports the family by working at a construction company. June is currently working on an unsatisfactory comic book project. His editor demands that he finish the comic in the very next episode due to the reader's lack of interest, and June pleads for an opportunity to continue because he needs the money, but as pleas fall on deaf ears that evening. Similar to his previous works, the consequences are dire this time around. Jun sits down, with a drink in front of the television and thinks about his declining life, feeling dejected. He reaches the point where his frustration is so overwhelming that he starts writing a comic book that vividly narrates his own past and includes intricate details about his journey as an undercover agent. Jun wakes up the next morning to a surprising shift in his wife's demeanor. She tells him while she's making breakfast that she enjoyed his most recent comic and decided to publish it on his behalf. She gladly shares the positive remarks from perusers who have shown extraordinary excitement for the comic. June is in a state of panic as a result of this revelation because he had no intention of disclosing any information about his past, particularly the private and sensitive information that it contains. June rushes to the editor's office, concerned, pleading for he maintains that he only wrote the comic while intoxicated after it has been published. However, Citing the public's appreciation and enjoyment of the work in the following scene, the editor insists on refusing. As Jun returns home, worried about his daughter Guy Yong, it suddenly starts to rain. Had no umbrella with him. 
While waiting outside, he heads to her school to pick her up. He sees Guy Young's friends being driven to and from their homes by their wealthy parents in expensive cars. He is deeply affected by this website because he realizes that he cannot even afford a piano for his daughter. As a result, June ultimately decides to write more stories about his experiences in the past. With the publication of these new stories, the comics quickly spread across the internet. He writes thrilling accounts of capturing notorious criminals and his adventures as an elite assassin, capturing a large audience's attention, including the co-workers of Mina, Gao Yang's classmates, Jun's editor, and numerous townchildren. The family gradually recovers from their financial crisis over time. Consequently, Jun finally fulfills the desire of his daughter, satiating a desire by purchasing her a piano. However, greater success comes with greater difficulties elsewhere. The Aku goes to a cybernet facility to look into something, but he is surprised to find two kids there who know a lot about the secret missions of the National Intelligence Service. This includes secret information about how children under the age of 18 are trained to become brutal assassins. Curious about where their information came from. The Ag Gyu talks to the kids and learns that everything is based on the recent comics that went viral. He is surprised to discover that the comics even include the real names of the NIS agents and criminals after going through them. At the Darwin Awards, June will end up on the podium. The Aku holds an emergency meeting with the NIS later, concerned. During their discussion, officials arrive at an unexpected conclusion. June, the highly skilled former agent known for his extraordinary drawing skills, is still alive and was the one who used the medium of to expose the Nias. The director of the NIS Young Do assigns a team the task of locating and apprehending Jun out of concern for the nation's future. That evening, a grown-up Chil and Zhongdong go to the editor's office to find out where Jones is. When the editor sees government officials storming his office, he gets scared and tells Jun right away that Jun has been working at a construction site part-time. Jun is surrounded shortly after the NEO's agents arrive at the designated location. Nevertheless, our hero employs his extraordinary abilities, manages to subdue each agent without requiring much effort. After that, he quickly returns to his home and gets ready to leave the nation for this. He also calls his wife to let her know what's going on. But Mina doesn't understand what he's saying and thinks he's drunk, so she cuts off the call right away. Chili takes off his mask and shows June his face in the midst of the chaos after the NIS agents break into June's house and launch an attack on him. June's surprise at seeing him once more serves as a brief distraction. Before taking him into custody, he allows the NIS to incapacitate him. The main antagonist, Jason, and his companions return to the editor's office in search of information regarding Joan's whereabouts. June is being questioned about the comic at NIS headquarters at the same time. He asserts that he wrote it by accident while intoxicated. Young Do, on the other hand, remains skeptical and considers him a traitor. After that, June gets a distressing call from his wife and finds out that some kidnappers are holding her captive. They are unquestionably Jason's men. June and Dioker are both threatened by Jason with visiting his hideout. If he doesn't respond within the hour, you. June reluctantly agrees to comply because he is concerned about the safety of his family and that his wife will be executed. He makes a calculated move by pretending to confess everything and using the word, Dioker, for it. However, he makes a sudden attack on dioxide at the right time, successfully retrieving his gun and holding him at gunpoint. June is able to get away from the NIS with this leverage. He explains that he leaves his headquarters and makes his way toward the kidnappers. DOC's entire situation, Gil. A thrilling car chase between June and the NIS agents takes place in the following scene. June enters a tunnel after some time of evasion, knocking down the agents who are pursuing him before continuing his escape. Shortly thereafter, one of Jason's operatives arrives at the scene and eliminates the agents to prevent their tracking. When young Dell and his team finally reached the tunnel, they found their agents dead. Because of this, they come to believe that June was the one who killed everyone. Additionally, Jason's presence in the same town confirms Yongdong's suspicions that June is working with him to bring down N. I.S. consumed by rage, Young Do. Kidnaps Kai as a child and use her as a bargaining chip to get June out. The method works. In addition, as soon as June learns the news, he turns around and runs toward his daughter. 
He gets in touch with Jason along the way, promising to return once his daughter is saved from NIS custody. Mina, on the other hand, misinterprets her husband's intentions and believes that he has left her behind. She grabs a few bottles of alcohol that are in the room because she is in so much pain from this, and she drinks them. She will, on the other hand, be wary of causing harm to a child, pretends to take Gai Yong to the bathroom and takes advantage of the opportunity to flee. After that, he sends Jun a text message informing her to meet him at a specific location and waiting for his arrival. Be that as it may, it ends up being a snare. Fortunately, they are able to clarify the misunderstanding, and the Aku keeps Jewel updated on Jun as Chill confronts Jun at gunpoint and demands his surrender. Current circumstances they agreed to work together to save Mina once everything was sorted out before going to confront Jason. They stop at Jun's former home, which Jewel now uses as a weapon storage facility. There, they get some of the supplies that are needed, but before they leave, they hear the NIS approaching. Thinking quickly, Jun strikes him with a series of powerful punches to chill him and asks him to pretend that he lost him on the way there. In their scramble, Jun and Yacht, you accidentally leave behind the bag with the weapons. Shortly after he and Young, Do, the abandoned weapon bag is discovered when the troops arrive at the scene. This causes Young, especially if the junior intends to start a war against the NIS, to remain steadfast in his stance despite her efforts to persuade him otherwise. Gaeun and Jun Dioces arrived at Jason's hideout in the meantime. Jun and C step outside while the young lady stays in the vehicle, covertly recording their activities prior to sending the recording to Chill. When I saw it. After finding the location, Jongdu and his soldiers headed for the hideout. Jason, on the other hand, finally confronts Jun. The latter demands that Jason's operatives and his wife be freed. Bring her out in a state of extreme intoxication. However, before granting the couple permission to leave. With no other choice, Jason demands that Jun subject the art equipment to the same torture as Simon. Jun reluctantly agrees, but Jason is unsatisfied even by this. He grabs a flamethrower in a cruel twist and begins to blow up the art gill. The poor man appears to be headed for a terrible end. But at that time, the hideout is stormed into by the Nis agents. Although Zhang Do orders his soldiers to eliminate Jun in a desperate attempt to defend him after holding Jason and his men at gunpoint and sparking a fierce shootout between the two factions, Dacia is probably still dead. Even though Mina, Chili, and Wakui got involved, the young Do still stands firm. He gives his sniper one last command before firing at Jun. However, Chil unexpectedly leaps in front of Jun and takes the hit on his shoulder as the shot is fired. When that happens, Jason's right-hand man fires on the NIS from a higher vantage point. Agents out of concern for his friends and family's safety. Junior pulls out a gun and fires at the sniper from behind. However, Jason fires multiple shots at him, sending him flying to the ground. Nina and Vessel are crushed. In the wake of the incident, witnesses to this tragic scene. The remaining NIS is held by Jason. Hostages by agents there seems to be no hope left. However, Jun astonishingly rises to in an astonishing turn of events. He quickly grabs a gun and detonates a gas tank while wearing a double layer of bulletproof vest. Developing a distraction to deter Jason's man, Jun approaches Mina and Guy Yong in the midst of the chaos, offering them his bulletproof vest for their safety and apologizing for concealing his past. This sets off a fierce fight between Jason's henchmen and the NIS agents. After this, Jun pursues the main villain. Diago confronts Jason's right-hand man, and Chill engages in combat with a group of his henchmen. Using his exceptional fighting skills, the cowardly young Doe takes cover beneath the body of a fallen soldier in the interim. Jason is brutally killed when Jun is successful in throwing him out of a window. He completes the final task that she had abandoned 15 years ago with this. It's a little disappointing that the other agents were unable to capture him during that time. We are shown in the final scene that Jun and his family are now living in peace, far from the world of violence and crime. She will pay him a visit one day and encourage him to join the NIS. Jun, as always, politely declines the offer and chooses to pursue his dream of becoming a webtoon artist. Exactly as he had always imagined. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.